we live in the land of plenty. New Zealand has so much seafood, wild game and freshwater fish, there is no need to ever go hungry and it's all there, free for the taking. All you have to do is know how it's done and that's what this movie is about. I am Dawson Bliss. I was a professional hunter and fisherman for over 25 years and I'm about to take you on an adventure in wild New Zealand showing you how to live off the land. These are monster crayfish. This cave held probably 20 crayfish over 5 pounds. That would be a sight that most divers would never see in a lifetime of diving. At the present price for crayfish, which is about $99 a kilo, those crayfish in that cave would total $4,000. Some of these big crays, like the big one on the right you just saw, or the big one on the left at the bottom here, would weigh 4 kilos. So you're looking close to $400 for Money, one crayfish. Beautiful, Steve. That's fantastic. Hey! Yeehaw! Oh, wicked. That was a good size one, there. Oh, really fun over the wood. Oh, blimey. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Oh, wicked. Life can be pretty harrowing for these young chicks if they stray away from their nest when their mother is not there to protect them. But that's nature. I'll show you the most economical way to catch fish, even if you don't have any fishing gear whatsoever. Fiercely competitive in the attempts to get food, the molly mop would think nothing of attacking a fish that was still on the line. The molly mop and the Royal Albatross sure knew that the Sirocco was a great source of food. As soon as the carcasses were thrown over, they were devoured instantly. I don't want to fall in with him. <laughs> Eels are abundant in our streams and rivers around New Zealand and I can tell you that when you catch one in a mountain stream and smoke it properly, they are absolutely delicious. I've only got to look at it to see how good it tastes. That's got no additives in it, it's, it's just beautiful eel. My next great adventure was to catch up with my Czech friends to fish and dive the clear waters on long summer days around Tasman Bay. Another great adventure was about to happen. Yeah, I can't do it. tastiest mussels I have ever come across. There was no way I could get my Czech friends to eat them. They were vegetarians and there was no way they were going to eat mussels. Absolutely superb country, you know, this is this is my kind of living where we can uh, really live off the land without too much difficulty either. And that's one thing about what I'm trying to do and show you throughout this movie is that it's not hard, it's not difficult, it's not rocket science, it's one of the big things, of course, would be uh, local knowledge, just knowing where to go and what time to go. But what we're going to do while we're here with Richie is, is uh, 
go out uh, hauling for garfish. Uh, they are like a, almost like a miniature um, swordfish. So it is a big thing to have some local knowledge and know what you're after, what you're targeting, when to target it and how to target it. But that's one of the things that you're going to learn by watching this DVD is that it can be done and we live in the greatest country on earth. There's no two ways about it. This is fishing at its best. Very little specialised gear but a lot of local knowledge. If Richie had come here an hour before or an hour later, we'd catch next to nothing. But at this time of the tide, we got a really good haul of garfish and they are absolutely superb eating. I guess by the look on their faces, my Czech friends were having as much fun as I was. We had no problem filleting the garfish and discarding the waste out onto the sand, the red bull gull or tarapunga was only too happy to take advantage of the free offerings. And when the Tongans come back after they got their limit of mussels and Richie offered them some garfish, the look on their face was just worth a million dollars. This was what wild New Zealand was all about living off the land and helping others that are a little less fortunate than us. Didn't take us long to get a feed of kinna. They are a member of the sea urchin family. Mussels grow in huge numbers in this area. Travelling up along the coast in Abel Tasman National Park, I wondered how much this country had changed since Abel Tasman first discovered New Zealand in the 1600s. So which, did you stay there? Not this, this is, I don't know what is it, but behind, a few house. meters behind is oh, yeah. another house. Okay. When Abel Tasman was sailing around Farewell Spit and into Golden Bay to replenish their water supplies, one of his boats was attacked by Maori and Waka. Four of his crew were killed along with several Maori. Tasman named the bay Murderer's Bay. This is Janitar's first ever dive with underwater breathing equipment. As she went off the boat, she whacked her bum on the side of the cowling. She might show you the bruise later. The fear of breathing underwater in a weightless environment is hard to overcome. And it was no different from my little checkmate from Prague. Learning to dive opens up a whole new world of delicious, healthy and free food. As a filmmaker, I get to see wild New Zealand better than most enjoy this great country for what it is but occasionally you'll come across some really special people and uh, what happened in, uh, before Christmas here at my backpackers lodge farmhouse lodge in Hawke's Bay I had three checks turned up well they were a cut above the rest when it come to seeking out and enjoying wild New Zealand they'd done a fair bit of the North Island and they were heading down south so I ended up uh, catching up with them down in uh, a number of places down there, but and, and to do with this particular film was at uh, Mochuaca. And uh, as you saw in that clip just before, where I took Zanata for her first tank dive. Now, for as long as I live, I'll never forget the moment that she took her first breath underwater. You know, it's a terrifying environment for nearly everybody that does it. And uh, to see that look on her face, which she could actually breathe underwater and not drown, was something that I, I just burned into my memory. It's just incredible. You've got to understand, you know, they, they, the three of them are from the Czech Republic and it's a lot different over there. Uh, they really 
have been impressed by the friendliness of Kiwis. Over in the Czech Republic, they tell me when they, they get up to go to work on the tube, they don't talk to people on the tube. And you just don't come across people that are friendly like uh, they are over here. So I've been uh, fortunate enough to show them my side of wild New Zealand, and uh, it sure has been a pleasure. was descending to a reef at 150 feet. Be warned, do not attempt this unless you have had as much experience as I have and do not do what I do and go it alone. If your air supply fails or you get stuck in a cave or any other equipment failure, there is no chance to get help and you will drown before you get to the surface. I know of no other diver that has caught a cray of this size. Filmed that capture, even though I was at close to a depth of 150 feet, and then had the pleasure of releasing it back to its aquatic paradise. that? <laughs> Do you get better than that? I doubt it. I thought I'd done pretty well getting an eight pounder on the last dive, but later in the day I was to come across this monster of the deep, by far the biggest cray I have ever caught. That is a massive crayfish, the best I've ever gotten. The big thing of that too was I was able to video it on the ahuki while I caught it and when I got onto it. My mum's going to be angry if we don't bring any crayfish because oh. we, we don't... Oh, we've got some at home to take home. Because we don't have any money. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll give you one to take home. Don't you worry. OK. How could a grandfather resist a request like that? Also, what we do show you in the movie is some beautiful dishes to cook and amongst them, crayfish, prepared the best way possible. There's a pack not far from here. I sell the younger dogs that are here on this trip for $2,000 before they are born. But before they go to their new owners, they must be trained to catch wild boars. I can promise them when they dug off like that, definitely a peak been there in the last hour or so. God, I love this. When I got up to the ridge that the dogs had headed over, I discovered the reason they were so keen. That's a beautiful sound. They're only about, a, about 180 metres up here, so it shouldn't take long. We're going to get going. They're holding it, so it's not going to get away now. Rags and Bryn bailed it to start off with, which they will do with a pig like that, but they're... Uh... Oh, yes! sitting down and that's what dogs have got to do on these bigger pigs they won't stop otherwise I spent a couple of days hunting there when I heard the white bait were running over in the Motueka River that's all I needed and a few hours later I was there with a net in the water. To say I was pleasantly surprised would be an understatement. A half a kilo in there. Incredible, right? The way it was looking this day was going to be yeah, one where I was going to make more money than I'd made for a while. This was being Richie's day. Not only was he hauling in kilos of white bait, he was on the way to being a star in film and in print. A reporter from the Nelson Evening Mail had heard the bait were running and was down here for a story and some pictures. Yep, yeah, you're a metre in front of you. 
Half a meter, go down, 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 yep. They must be clear. The clearer the bait, the harder they were to see. Oh, that's clear. Yes, it came in the water long there. The best money-making trip I had ever had. Yeah. But it wasn't to last for long. On my way home late at night, my mate rings up from where he was fishing the Waikato. Laurie said they were experienced their biggest run for years. I got off the ferry at 1am, dropped my catch off at Farmhouse Lodge in Hastings, and was fishing the Waikato by 3pm that day. My record money-making trip was about to be blown out of the water. You are looking at over 100 kilos of weight bait. That story will be told in our next movie, How to Live Off the Land, Part 2.